All right, we are almost done here. You guys made it to the end. It's the last day, we don't have a lot left to do, but what we do have left to do today is pretty important. So we're gonna do two things today. One is that we're gonna look back on the semester um, because I want to talk about how m hard you have worked um, and how much you've accomplished this semester because this is an important thing to keep in mind as you go forward um, in other classes in our program. Um, you know, you guys have done fantastic work this semester. I have been just shocked by how much this class has been able to do. Um, but you didn't get here, you know, by accident. You got here by doing a lot of hard work. So I have some pretty fun numbers that we're gonna look at first. And then you guys are gonna help us improve the class by filling out the course evaluations. And I will tell you a little bit about how those transform the course as you know it this semester, because we do respond to that feedback uh, we do take your suggestions very seriously. And in, the, in fact, this semester, we spent a lot of time working to realize something that students from last semester really wanted. Okay, uh, but let's start, you know, just go running down the numbers here. Um, I always wanna take the chance to, to thank the course staff, so this is a good time to do that. Um, you guys throughout the semester have worked with a fantastic group of, you know, a dozen TAs. Um, 12 course developers. Some of the work of those developers was more visible than others. For example, our new MPs. Um, others were working behind the scenes to improve things in ways that you might not have always realized. Um, certainly the 100 CAs that helped out this semester deserve a, a massive amount of credit. Uh, I'm sure many of you have favorite CAs that you interacted with in office hours, and I would encourage you to take a moment over the next couple days, send them a message on the forum, or start a thread, and just you know, shout outs to some of them, because they, they work really hard. Some of them, um, you will be in that same boat next semester, some of you. And then, of course, um, you know, a, a great class always builds its own community. And there's been um, a lot of you that have been putting in your own hard work on our forums. I know in office hours as well, in ways that aren't as visible to us, helping each other out, um, you know, providing advice and guidance. We'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow night, because I have some awards in mind for some of these students. Um, but certainly I think you know who some of these people are, right? And, and in many ways it's been fun for us to see lots of people start to reach out on the forum and help each other, you know, solving problems, providing advice, even just providing a little bit of encouragement, right? All right, so, well, that's a big picture of me. That's not exactly what I wanted up there. Um, my main goal here was to just, um, you know, r remind you about all the people that are involved in the class, right? So all of our TAs, um, all the course assistants. Why don't you guys give them a big round of applause, you know, at this point, for all of their hard work this semester. I could stand here for 10 minutes scrolling through, but, but you guys know these people, you know, you've, you've met them in office hours, you've worked with them, they, they've helped you in, in really meaningful ways. But what I really want to do today is talk about you and how much work you guys did. I'm not going to talk about how well you did in the class, because you know that. You can just go on the website, you can see you know, what the grade distribution likes, looks like. You can see the fact that the median grade on the MPs was like 100. You can see that the median grade on the homework was like 100. Um, you know, so you guys know how well you did. What I wanna talk a little bit about is something that's a little bit less visible to you, which is how much work that actually took integrated over three months. Um, so let's start with the more boring uh, pieces. So you guys did tend to come to class. Um, this is the 40th lecture we've held this semester. It's pretty good, 15 weeks, so I think we missed five here and there. Um, Barack Obama uh, was resp responsible for one of those, so I don't take credit for that one. Um, I played 155 songs before class. It doesn't count today, so that's probably up to about 160. Uh, 1,263 slides that we used throughout the semester. Um, total attendance for the entire semester was about 21,000. Um, uh, combined across all, and that, that's just people that participated. Um, you guys viewed the YouTube lectures for about 200,000 minutes, so it was clear that those were uh, helpful for people in, in reviewing and preparing for the quizzes and things like this. Almost 10 million slide views. So this is the number of times people looked at individual slides, so it was clear to us you guys were using this for review. Um, this is one of my favorite statistics, right? I was hoping this number would be zero. It's not quite zero. Eight, there were eight students that are still enrolled who never came to class, ever. Um, I really like the number eight, so when this popped up last night, I was like, oh, it's a sign, 
right? Um, it's like my, my, it's my special number. Um, anyway, yeah, there, somehow, and I'm sure they're not here today, right? But, you know, uh, c congratulations if you're in this group. I looked them all up, and any, anyway, they're, they're not doing particularly well in the class, so that may not surprise you. But yeah, somehow eight people managed to never come to class, ever. Wow. That's, that's sort of an accomplishment at this point. Um, all right, so let's talk about a little bit about the MPs. Uh, there were seven, that includes the final project. Um, you guys, we graded, uh, oh, just over 34,000 commits. This was as of last night. Um, you guys submitted about 21,000 times. Um, you guys ran the auto grader yourself about 80,000 times as you worked on the MPs. And according to some of the data we collected from IntelliJ, you guys ran the test suites about 100,000 times. That, these numbers sound right to me. Um, you guys were faced with over 400,000 failing tests. I, I like this number, uh, because only 240,000 of the times you ran the test, they actually succeeded, right? So hopefully this gives you a little bit of idea of what it's like to work as a computer scientist. This number doesn't change very much um, as, as you go on. Um, so it, it takes a number of failed test cases to get to a, a successful, successful one. Um, over all of the, your MP submissions, all of the work on the MPs, you guys added or modified about 700,000 lines of code uh, total. Um, this number, I think, is a little low, actually. I'm gonna look into this a little bit, but about, about 13,000 estimated hours spent working in IntelliJ. And these numbers, number three and number four, are only for MP zero through three. So we didn't have this data once we started working on the Android MPs. That may be why this number's a little small. All right, so clearly the MPs kept you busy, but these are some of my favorite numbers, actually, for the homework problems. So this was sort of a new component of the class, doing these daily homework problems. Um, I think this number is up to, like, 112 now, um, that I, I released some of the ones from the, the exam that you guys took. So 108 homework and exam programming questions, not the multiple choice questions. Um, we wrote about 9,000 lines of code to test those submissions and code that was provided to you. You guys spent about 26,000 hours practicing on those problems. This is as reported by Per. Um, so that's, that's a pretty astonishing amount. Um, what I really like is you spent almost 9,000 hours on the ungraded programming problems, right? So just getting practice. This is what we wanted. To me, these are very, very happy numbers. So when I was trying to get data out of PrayerLearn last night, it was actually crashing because some of our data sets are so big, okay? So, so this is not complete. This is only on the things I was able to get out of it. But you guys submitted at least 140,000 submissions as part of these homework problems. I think the actual number is substantially larger than this. Um, you guys wrote almost a million lines of code as, as in, in completing the, the homework problems. And these are not comments, just actual lines of source code. Um, all right, what about the forum, right? So we pulled data from discourse. Um, you guys generated almost 6,000 topics. That's a new thread on discourse. Those topics generated, um, it looks like almost 25,000 posts, which is nice. Every topic seemed to get a couple of responses. Um, you guys viewed, these are topic entrances, so anytime somebody views a topic, so you guys were quite active on the forum, actually. You viewed uh, topics almost half a million times and read almost two million posts over the course of the semester. Um, as a class, you spent about 10,000 hours on the forum. Uh, probably 8,000 of those were on the meme thread. Um, but anyway, but, but yeah, I, probably not, actually. So, so the forum seemed like it was useful. You guys uh, used this as an opportunity to help each other, which was really the goal. Um, you gave each other almost 16,000 likes. I like that, right? So a lot of, like, positive inf reinforcement, sort of feedback on the form. So what does this all mean? To me, it means that you, you were, worked really hard to get to this point. And I, and I want to, I think that's really important to emphasize, because this is what you have to do next. When you go on from here, you know, you're going to end up in classes that don't necessarily provide all the structures that we provide for you, but you have to keep approaching them in this way, doing something every day, um, you know, putting in the time. This is how you learn this material, right? We do our best to try to keep you busy and try to give you something a little bit to do every day, but as you go on into 126, 173, 225, 233, 241, whatever courses you take in our department or in other departments, this is how you succeed in these classes. 
So I hope for, particularly for those of you that are freshmen, um, this is a useful lesson, right? This is how you do college. A little bit every time, every single day. All right, so now what do we do, other than the, the feedback forms? Um, well, if you are lucky, some of you will go on to take 126. So many of you will be enrolled in 126 next semester. Um, I'm gonna tell Carl that he has a really good incoming batch, so hopefully he'll, he'll find some new challenges for you guys to work on. So that course is a huge amount of fun. Um, if you are, how many people cannot take 126? Okay, so you guys have a special challenge, which is that you have to keep your programming hand dirty they say, right? You can't just stop. One of the reasons why 126 came into being was that the department realized that having people start in 125, learn some programming, and then take nine months off and try to uh, succeed in 225 was not working. It's too long of a period of time, you're gonna forget a lot of things. So if you can't take 126, there's some other options. So if you didn't take 196 this semester, you can enroll next semester. You don't have to take it in the same semester with 125. Um, that's a good way to keep busy. You'll learn Python, you'll keep programming, and so, you know, when you sign up for, if you wanna go on to take 225 next fall, you won't have this big gap of time when you've not been doing anything. Another thing you can do, which I would really appreciate, is you can sign up to be a CA. That's a great way to help out. You're gonna be reading a lot of student code. You know, it's not quite the same as writing code, but it's equally, uh, I would say it's more challenging, actually. Um, if you spin up some side projects, whatever you do, but, but I will guarantee that if you take nine months off, so if you're like, thank God this is over, you know, and you wake up in January and you don't program in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and you sign up for 225, you are gonna be in trouble. Uh, this is why 126 exists. Don't ask me why we don't allow other people to take it that aren't majors, that's not my decision. Um, but the reality of the situation is that if you stop and try to pick this up, you know, um, nine months later, you really will struggle. So do something to stay busy. Um, and I can, I can provide ideas on the forum if you want. One of the things you can do is sign up to be a CA. We are definitely looking for great CAs for next semester. We have another big class. Um, the spring semester, we tend to get more beginners. We tend to get more students from outside of CS, so it's helpful to have a great group of motivated course staff. So please sign up. There's more information at the link. Uh, I've also posted this on the forum a few times. Um, you will learn an enormous amount from this experience. So, you know, people have said, well, if I've applied to be a CA, will I get it? If we think that you're gonna learn from it, you will. This is a learning experience. It's not a reward. Um, the, the idea is to, help you learn how to do this. And I hope, when you think back on the experiences that you've had with the CAs this semester, you'll think about that a little bit, right? In the sense that they're learning how to do this too. Looking at other people's code is not easy. Um, and you will find that out if you sign up to be a CA. I hope many of you will. And it's a lot of fun, right, obviously. Uh, you can stay involved with the class. Um, you'll, you know, we're, we're always trying to improve things. We're always trying to do new things, and the CAs are big. They, we, we just could not teach this course in this way without the course assistance. It just, it, it wouldn't work, right? We'd have to totally redesign the class. So it's an incredibly critical and important part of how we do this. Okay, so in a few minutes, we're gonna do the course evaluations. Um, one thing I'm gonna need is a couple of volunteers from the balcony um, and then from down here to come down here, get the forms, take them out, and, and retrieve them. So if you're interested in doing that, um, you know, particularly if you're up in the balcony, maybe start making your way down so that I can give you some of the forms. Anybody can do this, um, please. So I'm gonna hope a couple of you get up and start making your way down here. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we do this. Oh, let me, let me point out something else. So you guys are gonna fill out these paper forms today. This is the first time that we've touched paper in this class, and I find that deeply embarrassing. Right? It's not my decision to do this. If it was up to me, we'd be doing them online. Uh, the department doesn't want to do that for reasons I don't understand, so we're gonna do them on paper. I have some spare pencils. Hopefully many of you brought a pencil. Hopefully many of you still know how to write. Um, I'm forgetting that a little bit more every day. Um, but here's the thing. So you guys are gonna fill out these forms today. They're gonna go off into some place somewhere, and then I won't see them for a couple of months. Here's the problem. During that time period, 125 starts up again. So I want feedback more quickly. So here's what we're gonna do. You guys are gonna do these forms today. They're incredibly important. 
People care about what you put down on the forums. I do, and then other people. Um, but I'm also, after class, gonna send out a link to a Google Forms survey. It's totally anonymous. It is identical to the ISIS forums in every way. And I would like you to do that, even if you're here. Two reasons for this, right? One is that we will get those results immediately. The second reason is, you know, the, the, the ISIS forum says, you know, sh tell how to improve the class. And it gives you, actually, can one of you guys come up here and help me out? So the forms are back there on the table. Can you just go grab me one? Yeah. yeah. So I'll show you. The forum says, you know, provide ideas about how to improve the course. And then it gives you a box that's like that big. I suspect you have more ideas than that. So I would like to see and give you a chance to write more. So the online form, obviously you can use like a keyboard, a somewhat modern uh, implement. You can write as much as you want. To be honest, if you want to, if you're willing to do both, I'm totally fine if you just leave the forms on the ISIS form blank, as long as you promise me that you will go online and complete the form and, and write, you know, write paragraphs about how you'd like the course to change. So again, this is a, the way that we're trying to get more feedback more quickly uh, from you, so, so please, uh, oh yeah, here. I just wanna show you one of these. I have one thing I wanna point out about the forms. All right, so, so please, you know, please do both the paper form. If you just wanna do the quantitative parts of the paper form, that's okay. Again, on the back it says, what are the major strengths and weaknesses of the instructor? This box is clearly not large enough to list all of my weaknesses, um, so you can do that online. The other thing I wanna point out, because uh, a couple of people uh, messed this up last semester. For some reason, the first, so the first two items on this form are the most important for some reason. They are squished up here at the very top. So don't miss one. Like, this is like a bad ballot or something like that, right? Uh, last semester, there were maybe like a handful of people, but large enough that I noticed, that forgot to fill out one of the first two items. So just don't miss those. It's a, the form is a little bit confusing. Thank you. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about what we do with the ISIS forms and what we'll do with your online feedback this semester. So last semester, I taught the course for the first time when I had sort of full control over it. And we were using this system to do small programming problems that I wasn't super happy with, and, you know, there weren't very many problems, and they were kind of, I, I, it was hard for me to write new ones, and they weren't very well integrated with the course content. I was, we had started to use some of the programming problems on the exams, but I was thinking of just ditching that whole portion of the class, because I just didn't think it worked very well. So I got the ISIS forms um, last, at some point over the summer. I was down in Texas at my in-laws place, and I sat down. You know, it's always good to do this, like, in a peaceful place, because you get to read a lot of angry comments. Um, and I sat down with the forms, and the, we, we, I think we had, like, 350 last semester, and I started going through them. And I went through all of them. I, went, I read all the feedback. The thing that got brought up over and over and over again shocked me. We want more small programming exercises. That was what people said on the forums. I had no idea. This hadn't come up on the forum, hadn't come up in the anonymous feedback forum, um, but over and over again, there was a large portion of the class that said, you know, we really want more of these small programming problems to practice. Well, this semester you got 110 more of them. Um, and, you know, we, we decided, so that was something that we did entirely because of the feedback we got on the ISIS forms. I never would have done that otherwise, right? That was a big investment in the class. I think it's paid off in an enormous positive way. I think the homework that we did this semester is probably the best new thing about the class. Um, but that was entirely the result of feedback that was left by students like you doing the thing that you're about to do. All right, so please, take this seriously. You know, whether you write this on the form here or on the online form, I don't care. Um, but we, we do strive to improve the class every single semester, um, and feedback from you matters a lot, right? If, again, if it weren't for those students last spring who took the time to fill out those forms, the class would be very different, and I think the class would be worse. I, I think we would have missed a big opportunity to make this big positive change that has really helped you all learn an enormous amount this semester, way, way more than we had in the past. Okay, any final questions before we wrap up? on anything. 
You guys know we have the fair tomorrow. I hope I'll see many of you there. I have a few announcements after this, but final questions. Anything on your mind? Questions about being a CA? Anything that left for me to talk about? Okay, good. Oh, sorry. Ah, okay, so the question is about the, the, the paid core staff positions. So, um, we have some positions available, uh, both to analyze data generated by, generated by the class and to do some development. Um, it really depends on how many of them are sticking around. I don't know that yet, right? Um, if they all decide to leave, then we'll have a lot of slots. If none of them decide to leave, we, we won't have very many. Yeah, so it's a good question. Yeah. The, the qualifications for becoming a course assistant are, are very, are very relaxed, right? You need to be able to, willing to do a couple of hours a week. You know, somebody pointed out in the forum that they just want to help out on the forum in their bathrobe from home. Um, I might be okay with that. Why not? You know, I mean, um, I, I don't mind. Yeah. So we, so that question is, what's the estimated time commitment for being a CA? We ask people to commit to like three to five hours a week. Right, if you, if you want to, so one option is to help out with one lab and then do like an office hour, right? The other option is to do maybe three office hours. I think next semester, as long as we can find out how to monitor it, I'd probably be okay with people just working on the forum as well, right? So if you just want to spend a few hours a week on the forum answering questions, that's fine with me. Yeah, Jeremy. Like one, one credit hour. Jeremy, I'm expecting you to be a CA. I'm gonna be angry if you're not. Just say he said he was gonna do it next semester. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Great questions. Yeah. What's that? About the meme competition? Is that the question? Yeah, so uh, we're gonna announce the winner of that tomorrow at the award ceremony. Because otherwise no one will come, right? I'm sure that 90% of the people who come to the award ceremony will be there either because they think they're gonna win a prize or they wanna know the, the, the meme competition winner. Is there food at the project fair? Yes, there is food at the project fair. Uh, please don't broadcast this widely. There is not food, there's not enough food for everyone who would come to the project fair if they thought there was food. Um, but there is enough food for everyone who would come to the project fair if they didn't think there was food. So as long as we can keep that a secret between me and the 500 of you, we're okay, All right? Um, but yeah, there will be food. When will we know what projects got featured at the fair? Uh, tonight or tomorrow, right? I have some scripts I need to run. So the question was, when do we know what projects got featured for the fair? Uh, today, tomorrow, I'll start running my tools today, so we'll start building the web page that'll have all of the names of the projects and the YouTube videos and, and the featured ones, right? But obviously there's labs going on today, and so until those labs are done, we won't know all of them, yeah. Question over here. Yeah. What's that? How many pairs of jeans do I own? More than one, that's all I'm gonna say, right? Um, I, I like them all. I think I have like two different styles, but I can't tell the difference anymore. I was a little fatter before, and so like, I could tell that one was a little tighter, but now I think I've lost some weight. So. It's an interesting question, a fair game, yeah. I'm not sure exactly which, so, so there is, I, I, sorry, so, so it's a great point. I, I meant to mention this, thanks for the reminder. So there is a brainstorming document that I have had up for several semesters now uh, that's linked off of the CA page. So I would encourage you to go through that. Um, it's not fully up to date. I need to go through and kind of update it a little bit at the end of the semester because as we teach the class and things change, um, we, you know, we become interested in different projects and stuff like that. I will certainly respond to feedback on that form. I haven't had a chance to do that recently, but that's something I'll start looking at um, tomorrow. But if you have, I, you know, if you want to be a CA or if you're interested in being a course developer, going through that, that page and looking at some of the ideas we have for what to do differently uh, is a great place to start. And like I said, some of those are less important than I thought they were. Uh, some of them may be more important for next semester. I will say, just as, um, and I don't know, I, I'll have to be careful about posting this video, um, that there, there may be big changes in the works for this class. And, and actually, I shouldn't call them big, right, in the sense that uh, they may seem superficially large, um, 
but I have, I have begun to, um, I have initiated a process of reconsidering the language that this class is taught in. So that will not happen next semester. It might not even happen the semester after next semester, but um, you guys are freshmen, and so you may be, you may be around to witness that change, right? Even at the rate that we are able to do things here. Yeah. If I wanna go on the record here. Um, so my suggestion is that we uh, teach it in Copeland. Um, I have lots of reasons for that, but happy to discuss it on the forum, right? Um, Kotlin is a modern language with much more elegant syntax. Uh, it, it supports multi-paradigm programming a lot better than Java does, um, and it has a much more powerful compiler. So I kind of think Kotlin is like Python++ in the sense that you can write very elegant code with it, but you get all of the type safety that you get with Java, right? And you could do Android stuff, so in, in many ways, Certain parts of the class would stay very similar. We still do Android development. I think that's really exciting and fun. Um, but I think by using Kotlin, we'd be able to, um, you know, we'd be able to avoid some of the pitfalls that I see with using Java. Yeah. Why not C++? Oh, okay. We do enough old languages here right now. Right. Yeah. Modern C++ isn't too bad, according to Carl. But, but I think we could do something else. All right. I rambled for long enough. Any last? course infrastructure related questions? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. So is it possible to still have access to the homework uh, uh, from this semester? So, so here's the obvious answer to that question. I don't want to have to write 110 homework problems every semester. Um, and the, the longer these stay out in the world, the more likely it is that we're, they're going to become less effective for obvious reasons. Um, so I, I know people have asked about this. I'm certainly aware of the fact that this would be great for you. I know that, like, for some of you, having done all these is a huge amount of work, and you feel like you've created something, and you don't want to lose it, right? I get that. Um, I don't know what the right trade-off is as far as, again, just making sure that we don't have to refresh that question library every semester. That's a huge amount of work, right? Yeah. What's that? Opening up CA positions through homework. Oh. Writing homework is harder than you think. Yeah. I, I would be happy, so I'd be happy to have CAs write homework. I just think that you'd be surprised at how subtle it is to get, to get good homework done. Right? Not, not to say you can't do it. I'm certainly, we'll, this will be something that we'll certainly explore next semester. Right? Maybe that should be part of your application, you have to write a homework problem. Yeah. You know, I, I put, like, a fair amount of time into this last, uh, uh, last fall, and then I haven't really touched it since, right? But, but thank you. I, I do feel like having a good website is important. You know, we'll, we'll get a couple years out of this website, and then it's gonna start to look old, and we'll do it again. So maybe you'll be around to help us out with, with the next redesign. Yeah? Why well, can't CAs access quiz problems? Um, there's a lot of CAs for the class. Um, and it, it sort of becomes a, a trust issue, right? Um, you know, releasing those questions, again, releasing quiz questions to a, a larger group makes it more likely that they're gonna work their way out into the world into places that we don't want them, right? So, so actually, one of the, the interesting challenges we have for this class going forward that I'm hoping some of the course developers and CAs will help with is figuring out how to manage some of these things, right? How can we tell that we need to refresh our question library, that some of the questions aren't as effective as they used to be? They're great questions. Yeah, Connor. So, so it's, the, overall, so the question was, why, why can't we release the final project earlier? Overall, I would just say the following. The, the role of the MPs in this class is definitely going to change um, because of the homework problems that we're using now, right? So it used to be, you know, last spring, you know, I was really gung-ho about getting an MP out on day zero. We actually released an MP on the first day of class. That terrified 
a lot of people, and I think a lot of people drop for that reason. Because MP MPs are scary, right? They're big, there's a lot of complex pieces of code you don't understand. Um, now that we have these, this, this homework system, right, it's, it's not clear to, I, I feel like we need the MPs to evolve into to doing something different, right? Because I can teach individual concepts much more effectively by assigning homework problems than I can by, by writing MPs. Good new MPs, always something we want, right? So if you have ideas for good new MPs, Please sign up. That was probably one of the, my favorite things that happened this semester is uh, MP5, which a lot of you didn't do, which is kind of sad. Um, I, I realized that yesterday. Um, I should have known, because uh, you guys got there and decided to drop it. Uh, but we'll, we'll fix that next semester somehow. Other questions? Yeah. I don't know. I, I want people to do all the MPs. So maybe we will take a, we will re remove the MP drop policy. Zero drops. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm annoying people right before you fill out the course evaluations. That's part of my strategy. Um, all right, anything else? Yeah. We talk to them all the time, yeah. And that's certainly something that we're aware of. Okay, so with that, I'd like to say thank you to all of you um, this is my first time teaching the class in the fall. I've had a fantastic time. Um, you know, it's, it's, there, there have been some things going on in my life that you don't know about that have made this semester sort of difficult. Um, this class has been always a huge source of fun for me, right? And enjoyment, I've really enjoyed watching you guys work so hard, learn so much this semester. So, you know, even as there's been other things sort of going on that have been, that have been tougher, um, coming back to this class, uh, you guys have sort of really helped me along this semester, sort of helped me get through, th through some things, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, with that, we're gonna do announcements for the last time, so remember, final, final, final project fair tomorrow, 5 p.m. Um, we'll be putting the final project grades up at some point soon, probably like tomorrow or Friday, all of the grades will be up. All the final grad ca grade calculations will be done. So at that point, I really want you to go to the grading page and double, triple check that everything is right. I'm pretty sure it is, um, but I'd like to make sure, right? I don't want to have any small mistakes that, that we might make. Yeah. I wanted to bring Choo Choo in. I don't know when that's gonna happen. I'll keep you posted. Um, I don't know if the fair is a good idea. Um, he's not always the best around food. Um, and I don't know where he would end up. That could be an interesting project, though, right? Just let him in the building and see where we find him a couple hours later. Um, actually, I know where we'll find him. We'll find him downstairs next to where the food is. Um, but yeah, I'd like to bring him in at some point. I'll let you guys know when that happens. So at some point, we're gonna assign letter grades. Those will be visible to you on the website first. So the first place you'll see your letter grade will be on our grading page. At some point later, I'll upload them to Banner and they'll be officially visible, um, you know, uh, but, but that's, that's how we do things. So again, please double, triple check that the grades are correct. Um, this is really important to us. We spend a lot of time on this. I don't, you know, at some point we have to set a cutoff. Trust me, it's impossible to do. When I used to teach smaller courses, you would look for gaps. Like, it's like, oh, there's one point gap there. That's a good place to put a grade cutoff. With this many of you, it's impossible. There are no gaps, right? You guys are like evenly distributed along this continuum. And so inevitably, there is gonna be somebody here, right? And again, I'm telling you this right before you fill out the course evaluation forms, who is like 0.001 point away from some grade boundary. There's nothing we can do about that. The boundaries have to be somewhere. If we move it just, if, if we move you just over it, then somebody else is right next to it, right? Um, so please, please, please double check to make sure that the grades up there are correct. All right, I've had a great semester with you all. Thank you very much for all your hard work. We're gonna do, do we have, I hope I left you enough time to do these forums. Oh good, okay. So do the forms, do the forms online please. Once you leave here, you have about 15 minutes to finish them up. I'm gonna play one more song as I leave. Um, people who are helping me out, please come up on stage. I'll give you some of these. And uh, I will see you, uh, hopefully many of you tomorrow.